Good morning, students, and welcome to another video um, in our geometry unit. We're going to be talking about the volume of prisms in the next two videos. So we're going to talk about two specific kinds of prisms in this video and two, I would say, more unique prisms in the next video. So the first thing we need to do is understand what a prism is. We're actually going to split this page today into three sections. So if you just want to split your page into thirds, um, that should be plenty of space for each of the sections that we're going to do. In the first section, um, we're going to talk about a prism. So a prism is a 3D figure with the base shape, but it has parallelogram sides, which are typically rectangles. So I'm going to write that down. So a prism is a 3D figure with a base shape. And this base shape could be any of the kinds of shapes that we've been talking about. Trapezoid, triangle, circle, rectangle, square, parallelogram. Um, so it's a 3D figure with a base shape, but parallelogram but parallelogram sides. And normally the sides, again, I'm just going to put this in parentheses underneath. Normally they are rectangles. So normally rectangles. I put parallelogram instead of saying they have rectangular sides because some of them, the sides based on like the angles are not going to be rectangles, but it's a base figure with, um, that has a base shape, excuse me, uh, and parallelogram sides, normally rectangles. Um, when we are talking about the volume of a prism, because prisms have these characteristics, there is kind of a certain generic way that we take the volume. And then when we get down into each specific prism, we will specify the volume formula. But the generic way that we take the volume of a prism is we find the area of the base shape. So area of the base shape. And I'm going to put a box around the word base, okay? Because it doesn't mean like the base when we talk about like the base of a triangle, the base of a trapezoid. It means like the base shape um, times the height of the prism, okay? So how tall the prism is. So we're going to find the area of the base shape and multiply it by how tall the prism is. And this height is not really referred to as the same as like the height of a triangle or a trapezoid. So on your like star formula sheets, the way they write volume of a prism, it'll just say prism. And then next to it, they'll have this formula, capital B times capital H. And they use the capital letters specifically because they want you to understand that this capital B means the base shape, the area of the base shape, times the height of the prism. They're not talking about our lowercase b and lowercase h um, that we've used with triangles and trapezoids and stuff like that. This is specifically talking about the base shape and the height or how tall a prism is. So you might be thinking like, okay, like what is the base shape? Well, it all depends on the type of prism. So you may have heard of a triangular prism, a rectangular prism, a cube is a form of a prism, a cylinder is a form of a prism. It's kind of a special prism, but it's a form of a prism. So depending on what kind of prism you are looking at, the name kind of tells you what the base shape is. So for example, the first one we're going to look at is a rectangular prism or um, a cube. So rectangular prism and a cube, they're not quite the same prism, right? A cube is going to have sides that are all the same measurement. A rectangular prism is not going to have sides that are all the same measurement. Um, but the way we find the volume for them is going to be the same way. Um, <clears throat> but in these particular... Uh, prisms, the base shape is going to be a square or a rectangle. So when we talk about finding the area of the base shape, we're going to be talking about finding the area of a square or a rectangle. So the way that we find the volume of a rectangular prism or a cube is we are going to take the area of the base shape, which is our rectangle or cube. So we're going to do our length times our width. And then we're going to multiply it by the height or how tall the prism is. I'm going to put a square box around length times width. So that way you can kind of reference back to I have a square up here because this is the area of the base shape. So I'm just going to put underneath this is the base shape. Okay, so 
when I want to find the volume of a cube or a rectangular prism, I really just have to take the three measurements they give me. And I've kind of labeled what they look like on the actual prism. Now, because you know, prisms, we can like this prism, you could kind of think about it as it's like laying down flat. We could stand a prism up to kind of look more like, I don't know, like a skyscraper or like a building or something. Um, you know, the way that the dimensions are kind of <clears throat> identified on the shape, you know, differs, but essentially this is kind of what it looks like. The height is going to be how tall the prism is, or if it's laying down flat like this, like how long the prism is, like what is its length lying down? And then the width and the length are mainly talking about this base shape of either a square or a um, rectangle. This one kind of looks more like a square, but um, you know, if it looked more like a rectangle, same thing. So let's say just for the sake of an example, I have a length of um, five, a width of three, and then the height of the prism is going to be 10, and we'll just do centimeters, okay? So the way that I'm gonna find the volume of a prism with these dimensions is I'm just gonna do length times width times height, which is five times three times 10. And this is all equivalent to 150. And since we, I said that we're just going to use the units of centimeters, I'm going to put centimeters. And since we're now in the third dimension, we're working with a 3D figure, we're going to put our centimeters cubed. Because if I label the centimeters up here, centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters times itself three times, which we would write as centimeters cubed. So this is how we find the volume of a rectangular prism or a cube, which hopefully that's a review from your previous math classes. But if it's not, now you know. Okay, the last kind of shape we're going to talk about in this video um, is a triangular prism. So based on the name, the base shape is going to be, as you see, a triangle. So you can think about triangular prisms. A lot of times they're drawn kind of like a camping tent. Um, sometimes they're drawn um, more like, again, like a skyscraper building. Um, but the base shape, like you could think about the top and bottom, is going to be a triangle. So when we're talking about the volume, we need to find the area of the base shape which in our case is going to be a triangle, times the height or how tall or how long the prism is. So to find the area of the base shape triangle, this is the formula one half base times height. And then we're going to multiply that by the height of the prism. So you'll notice the difference between the lowercase and the capital uh, H are important, okay? One means the height of the prism. One specifically means the height of the triangle. And again, I put a square around the base shape formula. So that way we remember, okay, this is what we would do if we have a triangular prism, the area of our base shape, area of a triangle, times the height or how tall the triangle is. So let's say for the sake of this example, we have... Um, a triangle that has a base of two um, <clears throat> and a height of five, the triangle does. And then um, the height of the actual prism, capital H, let's say it's seven, and we'll just use centimeters again. So the way that I'm going to find the volume of this triangular prism, I'm going to do one half base times height. I'm just going to put this in like brackets, you could use parentheses. So one half my lowercase base, which is two times my lowercase h, which is five. I'm just finding the area of this triangle right now. Um, and then I'm going to do all of that times seven. So if I solve this, I end up getting um, two times five is 10. Half of 10 is five. End up getting five times now this height of the prism seven, which is 35. And again, we're working with volume, so we're going to put our units cubed. So all I did was find the area of the base shape and multiply it times the height of the prism. So you'll see we kind of use the same process for the triangle, triangular and the rectangular prism, but the area of the base shape is different because the way we find the area of a triangle is different than the way we find the area of a rectangle. If you were working with the cube, we didn't do an example, but all of these measurements would be the same. Like if you had like a cube where the side was five, you would just do five times five times five. So now that you know this, um, I'm going to give you three practice problems, um, one kind of each prism that we've talked about. So your first two practice questions are the following. 
So you have a rectangular prism with a height of 12, the height of the prism is 12, a length and width of five and four. And then in your triangular prism, number two, you have a triangle with a base of 10 and a height of seven. And then the height of the prism is going to be 13. And then the last practice question I want you to do, I didn't draw it, but I simply wrote a statement. I want you to find the volume of a cube with a side of four centimeters. So it's the same formula as triangle, um, excuse me, it's the same formula as um, a rectangular prism. You can draw it if you want to draw it, but you don't need to. So these are your three practice questions. Check the table of contents if you have questions. And as always, I will see you later. Bye.